right, this is section 9-3, geometric sequences. Geometric sequences are similar to arithmetic sequences, only instead of adding and subtracting, we are going to multiply and divide. So, our objective is almost exactly the same. Define, identify, and apply geometric sequences. All right, here's our big point. You build a geometric sequence by multiplying each term by a constant. Just like in an arithmetic sequence, we build it by adding every term by a constant. Here we are going to be multiplying. And our essential understanding, what you should know by the end, is in a geometric sequence, the ratio of any term to its preceding term is a constant value. Now this value has a name. In arithmetic sequences, we call it a common difference, but in geometric sequences, we call it a common ratio. So a geometric sequence starts with a value of A, it has a common ratio of R, and it looks like the first term is A, then A times R, then A times another R to give us R squared, then A times another R to give us R to the third power. Alright? So our recursive and explicit definitions. To get from one term to the next one, our, our initial condition is A sub 1 equals A. To get to the next one, we just multiply by R. All right? An explicit definition is similar to our arithmetic formula, but we have multiplication, right? We have a multiplication sign, and it is R to the N minus 1 power. So as we are going up in the sequence, all we have to do is if we're looking for the 30th term, we take the first term times the common difference and then subtract 1. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so first, is this sequence geometric? And if it is, what are, what's the first term and what's R? Well, let's look here. As we're going from term to term, in this sequence, all we're doing is multiplying by 3. Get that out of there. Nice. So we're multiplying, or sorry, not by 3, by 2. The way we can tell that is we take the second term and we divide it by the first term. So 6 over 3, that equals 2. Do all of them equal 2? Let's try 48 over 24. 48 over 24, that equals 2 also. So the way you can tell if you have a common or a common ratio is if each term, when you divide it by the term in front of it, it always equals the same thing. So in this case, A1 is 3, R is 2, right? We start at 3 and we finish at 2. Here, this is times 2, 6 over 3 is 2, but is 9 over 6 2? No, it is not. So this is not a common, or it's not a geometric sequence. For this one, we need to use the rules of the exponents. So 3 to the 10 over 3 to the 5th equals 3 to the 10. You subtract 10 minus 5, get our exponents. So in this case, a sub 1 equals 3 to the 5th. My common ratio is also 3 to the 5th. So from one term to the next one, multiply by 3. On this one over here, we can see that we are still going to give a sequence that's going up, but it's plus 4 each time. 5 over 1 would be 5. 9 over 5 does not equal to 5. So this sequence over here is not a geometric sequence. It's an arithmetic sequence because we're adding by 4 each time. So, let's analyze these geometric sequences. So for this, we're going to use our explicit formula, which says a sub n equals a r to the n minus 1 power. And now we're going to look for the tenth term of the sequence, which gives us 4 is the first term, the common, the common ratio, r divided by 4 is 3. So that's going to be times 3. To the n minus 1 power, 10 minus 1 is 9. 
This one is going to need a calculator for because I can't do three to the ninth in my head. Times four gives me 78,732. Big number, but that's okay. Geometric sequences can get pretty high. Right. Now, to find the second and the third term, this is the same problem that we have with the arithmetic sequences. We could try to guess, we could try to figure it out, or we could realize that this is the fourth term. So a sub 4 has to equal the first term times my common ratio to the third power, to the n minus 1 power. All right, now we just plug it in. So this is negative 54 is equal to 2 r cubed. Divide. Divide by 2. That would be negative 27 equal r to the third. And then declare something to the third power, you take the third root. So the third root of negative 27 is negative 3. Now, an interesting thing happens here. Our sequence starts with 2. Multiplying by negative 3 gives us negative 6. Multiplying by 3 gives us positive 18. And then, most, and then my last term is negative 54. Notice the sequence goes positive, negative, positive, negative. In a geometric sequence, you either have all positive numbers or a sequence like this, positive, negative, positive, negative. You can never have all negative numbers. Because think about it, if we are always multiplying by a number, we're either going to get always positive, or every time you multiply a negative times a negative, it's going to turn into a positive. So you cannot have a sequence with all negatives. All right? Let's try a physics problem using a geometric sequence. So, a ball bounces. The heights of consecutive bounds form a geometric sequence. So we already know that we're dealing with a geometric sequence. What are the heights of the fourth and the fifth bounds? So here's the first, second, third, fourth, and then this is my picture. Alright, so we know everything we need to know. We know our initial condition. We know the third bounce. So let's form, let's set up an explicit formula. So a sub n equals a r to the n minus 1. I know the third bounce Okay, plugging in number, that's 49, equals uh, my first term, 100 r squared, divided by 100, and we get r squared equals 49 over 100, take the square root of both sides, gives me my ratio as 7 over 10, or 0.7. Now all I have to do to complete my to complete the sequence here, I take 100 times 0.7, which is 70 times 0.7 is 49. Perfect times 0.7 is 34.3 times 0.7 and for 5, it's going to be 24.01. So the fourth and the fifth, the fourth bounce goes up 34.3 centimeters. The next bounce, 24.01. And it'll keep going as it goes down. All right. So, an interesting thing that happens in a geometric sequence is the square of the middle term of any three consecutive terms is equal to the product of the other two terms. So what does that mean? That means that if you look at this sequence right here, 2 times 18, if I multiply 2 times 18 together, I get 36. It's equal to the middle number squared. 6 squared is 36. This works for any three terms in a geometric sequence. If you look at the red line over here, 6 times 18 is equal to negative 6 squared. Also, in blue, negative 6 times negative 54 is equal to 18 squared. 
as shown on the bottom one. How does this help us? It helps us get the geometric mean. Okay, the geometric mean. The arithmetic mean, if you remember, I'm going to put it at the bottom, was x plus y over 2. Well, the geometric mean gets a little more complicated, but not really. The geometric mean is the square root of x times y. Okay? So when we have two positive numbers, we multiply them together and take the square root, and we can find the middle number. So, geometric mean is positive by definition. There's two possible values for some sequences for the missing term. If both the lead one and the next one are negative and you don't have any other information, there's two possibilities for the middle numbers. The positive value or the negative value. Because remember, a geometric sequence can switch from positive to negative. So if you only have three numbers, you're not sure, you have to put the positive and the negative. Let's see how it works. All right, so here's a geometric sequence. Four blank three. Well, I know that if I take the square root of 48 times three, which is square root of one, sorry, 144. The square root of 144 is 12, but my answer could be either plus or minus 12. Because if this is a plus, this could be a plus or a minus. And then my geometric sequence still holds. But anyway, the answer is C. Okay. So that's our lesson on geometric sequences. Okay. To review, okay. geometric sequence uses multiplication. Arithmetic sequence uses addition and subtraction.